This is Washington Elementary School, uh, where I started playing music in 1992. A block away from here is Sound Over Sound Productions, where I recorded my first CD about six years later. My music career was born on this street, and today, some of the same people I met on this street are helping me start another musical journey. It's been a while. The song is very personal. I wrote it when I was having a really hard time in my life, kind of had a little bit of an existential crisis, so to speak, and I think that's really what the song is about. It's more of a general feeling that I think a lot of people can relate to. Time goes on, I get older. The lyrics are by Anna Sirota, a good friend of mine. She's also a professional photographer, and we've done a lot of photo shoots together. Anna wanted to start singing and writing songs, so I thought it would be a great opportunity for her to be on the record and to uh, meet somebody to help her out. So I put her in touch with Andrew Reynolds. I came up with the uh, melody and the, the chord progression based on what her lyrics felt like to me. I really loved what he did with it. Um, he was really patient with me. He gave me a lot of room to freak out and be nervous and self-deprecating. And um, he also inspired me a lot. You know, he's really talented. And I really think that he made the song in the end. We barely knew each other. So in addition to getting to write music together, and this was her first time doing it, um, we also got to really know each other and we had a, an arranged meeting time every week and um, we'd get together for a couple hours and work on this and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We worked hard and we had a good time. The drums are very distinct from the rest of the album. We used a vintage Slingerland drum set for this one and I played half the song with brushes, the other half with hot rods. The drums took 17 takes. Very wow. frustrating. Come on, breathe, relax. Something about that song just made me want it to keep getting more precise, because that's where I usually end up when I want to really, um, you know, be confident with it. Right. Just keep it simple. It was the same thing for Andrew, too. And uh, my foot's falling asleep a little bit. For the acoustic guitar sound, I was again after something very specific. It was the hardest I've ever had to work to track a simple guitar part, and the idea that it would take three sessions to play a song that I had played for months on end with her, you know what I mean? First it was that we couldn't get a good tone out of it, and then that we couldn't get it to stay in tune, and then it was just all in my head. It was a pain. I think I got a better one in me. Yep. Sorry yep. guys, I'm taking my shirt out, it's getting really hot in here. Ooh. The nice part was that by session three, you did like a complete first take, yeah. maybe like a couple punches, done. I'm glad it's over, but it sounds good <laughs> now I think too, you know, and I don't yeah. remember what guitar we chose, but I know we, we chose the right one. October 6th, Anna's first ever recording session. That was absolutely terrifying. Um, that was the first time that I met John Bross. Remember the three S's. I always say, John, remember the three S's. Mm -hmm. Star, smile, strong. Thankfully, you and John both made me feel really comfortable, and I didn't really feel like I was under pressure. Most people don't get it on the first try. They okay. don't, the first take, the first day. So don't worry about that. Just focus on, on singing the song, and feeling it, really try to get into the whole concept of the song. Put yourself in that place. So it took a while for me to get over myself and just enjoy the experience, but eventually I did. Okay, you're a little, just a little sharp. You just got, you hear it, right? Okay. For her second session, we took a different approach and let Anna record several full takes. Later, John and I combined Anna's best parts together on another track. That way, if she made a mistake, we didn't have to keep interrupting her. So without making her aware of every little problem, her confidence got much better. Mind sicker, colder. Everything just kind of flowed better. I felt like it was a really good session, and I was really shocked that I got everything in that one session. That was a really good, like, ego boost for me. 
to think that that's the same person that that I first started working with, who who told me she'd never be able to do it, and to now hear the recording that sounds like, yeah, this is no problem. This is what I do. So cool to hear it. You got it. Andrew left some sections open for a solo, but we weren't sure what the part would be. We had been talking about violin um, being the lead yes. instrument. I began picturing a woodwind or a brass instrument. And then you started talking about flute, and I was like, well, oh, okay, cool. And there was only one person I could think of to play that. Paul Larson is not only an amazing musician, he's also my first musical mentor. He was my first band director. He got me into jazz and improvisation. He taught me how to use a four track recorder, how to play keyboards. And it was he and the other amazing music teachers I had at school who constantly encouraged me to pursue this passion. I was like, okay, well, who better to uh, help out the first timer than uh, you know, the guy who, you know. The old timer. <laughs> <laughs> I think it really complements the vocals and just the theme of the song and the feeling in the song. It's perfect. Here I was alongside my first musical guru in the studio where I made my first CD with the man who recorded that first CD, who is also a former student of Paul's. And all of us are now helping Anna record her first song. It's like watching my musical journey come full circle. It's, um, it's really beautiful. I felt really honored that your mentor was going to plan my song. That meant a lot to me, too. That was beautiful, man. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Really nice. John, what do you the last step was to add a bass instrument. Uh, I was determined to find someone I knew who could play an upright bass. Uh, Greg Guchar was already involved with another song for the record, and when he emailed me his biography, it said, Greg studied upright bass at County College of Morris. we didn't have access to an upright bass. As luck would have it, the man who introduced me to John Bross, that's Glenn Ayers, was in possession of his father's 1941 upright bass. Uh, so John and Glenn arranged for the bass to be dropped off at Sound Over Sound, and on April 15th, Greg came in to play it. He really worked hard on that part, but John Bross insisted that we also try his brother Scott. Here we are in a room full of strangers. Now Scott himself is a very accomplished bass player and he's played on my solo work before. So we let him have a try on April 24th. I hated having to choose between two great bass players, but in the end, we went with Scott's part. It was great, very subtle. It gave it a lot of depth that I felt was missing, and I'm really happy with it. What does the song mean to you? Not only was I working on music, I was also getting a new friend in the process, you know, so to me, that's really what the song means. It's, it's about my uh, new friendship with Anna, and you know, we were able to get close in a way that, you know, you really only can, I think, by working on music with another person. It's like a dream come true. It really is. It means the world to me. I never ever thought that I would do anything like this and I feel really honored and humbled to be among such amazing musicians. The song is called It's Been a While and it's on Johnny Rock and Friends for the record. Check it out. Here's your preview. Every day I